We have got a lot to talk about today. Brand new iPhones are on the horizon. Apple is about to be announcing the new iPhone X. That's what this is right here. And that's apparently what it's gonna be called. In addition, they're also announcing the new iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus. This is all happening. It's all going down tomorrow. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you one day in advance what Apple is going to announce. What's going on tech squad? Andrew Edwards here, editor in chief at gearlife.com. If this is your first time here, this channel is all about tech, gadgets, and gaming. So if you're into that kind of stuff, feel free to hit the subscribe button down below, as well as the bell notification icon to stay up to date on all future videos. Like I said, we are talking about tomorrow's Apple event. The big news is gonna be the new iPhone X. But on top of that, there's a bunch of other stuff Apple's gonna be announcing as well. The iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, the Apple TV 4K, the Apple Watch Series 3 with LTE, and possibly a couple of other things as well, maybe some new AirPods. We're gonna go through this stuff one by one, starting with the biggest story, and that is the iPhone X. Now, if you're wondering where all this information came from, number one, these are spoilers. I don't consider them spoilers, but some people online do consider them spoilers. And some people online are upset that people are spoiling Apple's event. So if you don't wanna know and you wanna be surprised and you wanna hear it first from Apple, don't watch this video. Watch tomorrow's video where we're gonna be doing a recap of everything that Apple announces right here on the channel. That'll be a live stream. So be sure you're subscribed for that. Now there've been a few leaks, a few leaks that have come out from Apple itself. There was the HomePod firmware leak that was accidentally set public, or at least it's assumed it was an accident. And then there was another leak from Verizon confirming the LTE Apple Watch Series 3. And then someone at Apple maliciously leaked new firmware for the new iPhones and current iPhones as well, as well as other iOS devices. So there's a lot of different leaks that have gone on just in the past couple of weeks and especially in the past couple of days that have informed all of the information that you're gonna hear in this video. Now I've got some mock-ups of the iPhone X here. It's smaller than the iPhone 7 Plus, but it has a larger display because the display is almost completely bezel-less with the exception of a very thin border around the display and the notch cut out at the top to allow for the camera sensor and the face ID functions. So let's start at the beginning with the name iPhone X. And I'm actually not sure if it's pronounced iPhone X or if it's pronounced iPhone 10. I can see Apple going either way. It is the 10th anniversary of the iPhone, although it's the 11th generation of the iPhone and it's the 13th model of iPhone that'll be announced. It has been 10 years, the 10 year anniversary, 10 makes sense. Similar to OS 10, OS X. A lot of people who called it OS X were usually corrected by those in the know that would say, no, it's actually OS 10. Is that gonna be a similar issue here? I don't know. The X also makes sense because they can keep the X naming so that next year, if the name is iPhone 10, it doesn't then have to be iPhone 11 alongside an iPhone 9, which would just, that just gets crazy and just gets weird. So my assumption is that it is iPhone X. I would have liked to have seen something different, possibly iPhone Pro, which would just seem to make more sense when you look at how Apple uses the Pro name. Pretty similar internals, just faster internals and a different exterior when you look at the MacBook, MacBook Pro, etc iPad, iPad Pro, but apparently iPhone X is the name to expect. Talking about that display, as I mentioned, it is almost completely bezel-less. It is an OLED display, and we are going to see a pretty significant resolution bump. So the current iPhone 7 Plus maxes out at 1080p resolution. So that's 1920 by 1080. And what we're expecting to see on the iPhone X is 2436 by 1125. So higher resolution display, but also a different form factor. We're looking at that same trend that we're seeing other smartphone makers gravitate to, which is the 18 or 18 and a half by nine aspect ratio. The display will be a true tone display, which is great. That's finally being brought to the iPhone over from the iPad. That launched on the iPad Pro in 2016, and it carried over to the new iPad Pros in 2017. And what that does is basically, there's a sensor on the front of the phone, on the front of the device, 
that reads the warmth of the light around you. So if it's warm yellow light, it'll make the whites on your display match that yellow tone. If you're in cold blue light, it'll make the whites more bluish so that the white on the display matches the environment you're in, which makes sense because if you're holding a white piece of paper and you walk into a room where the light's kind of yellow, that white paper is gonna reflect back some of those yellow tones. And if you take that same piece of paper into another room where there's cool blue light, it's gonna reflect some of that blue light back into your eyes. So it's trying to make the phone match what a natural white piece of paper would do. True Tone is cool. I have not heard anything though about ProMotion. That's the other great feature on the current iPad Pro. 120 hertz refresh rate on that display. The iPhone currently does 60 hertz, which is great, but I would love to see that 120 hertz ProMotion feature make it over to the new iPhone X. I'm a huge fan of ProMotion. It's probably one of my like top three features on the current iPad. Since the display is OLED, there will be burn-in avoidance technology built in as well. Let's talk about the processing power. This chip is gonna be ridiculous. It is the Apple A11 Fusion chip. The A10 Fusion in the iPhone 7 Plus was a four core chip, two high performance cores and two energy saving cores. A11 Fusion has six cores instead of four. It's still two high performance cores, but four energy saving cores. And one leak that came out was saying that the new A11 Fusion is scoring above a 10,000 on Geekbench. We'll see if that's true, but if it is the case, that's about a 60% increase in speed over the chip found in the current iPhone. So in one year, that leap is going from a 6,000 Geekbench score to over 10,000, which is crazy. Next, wireless charging. Wireless charging is finally coming to an Apple smartphone. It's gonna use the Qi charging standard. However, it may require a made for iPhone certification before it'll work. I'm not sure how that's gonna happen, if they're gonna control that through software or not. That's just one of the rumors that are out there, but wireless charging is definitely written into the iOS 11 firmware. So that's something we're gonna see not only on the iPhone X, but also on the 8 and 8 Plus. The downside of this is that it's 7.5 watt charging, so it's not the current 15 watt charging that we're seeing on the fast wireless charging devices. So you'll still get wireless charging, just won't be as fast as some other competing smartphones can do wireless charging. But something is better than nothing, I get. Another big one. Face ID. Since the new iPhone will not have a home button on the front since it's all display and there's no fingerprint sensor around back, what Apple is doing is instead of using the fingerprint for authentication, they're gonna be using your face. So gone is Touch ID, in is Face ID. This has been discovered in the Leech firmware as well. You hold up the iPhone to your face to set it up and you go around your face two times and it reads the 3D mapping basically of your face. So you can't fool it with a 2D picture like you can some other systems. It's not about the 2D image, it's about reading the 3D of your face. How deep are your eyes? How far does your nose come out? How wide is your nose? All that stuff is gonna be taken into account for Face ID. So it may be even faster and more secure than Touch ID. And Face ID is gonna replace everything that Touch ID does. So it's gonna be for unlocking your phone, for confirming you wanna download apps without putting in a password, and even for authenticating Apple Pay. Now you may be wondering, what about when I'm in the dark? I'm in a movie theater, I'm in the bed. Face ID uses an infrared sensor so it can actually see in the dark. Speaking of Face ID, and emoji are a new feature that are coming to the new iPhone as well. And emoji are emoji that you can send that are animated based on your facial expressions. So you can pull up an emoji and then it'll basically mimic your face and it'll even record your voice and send that through to the person you're iMessaging with. So for example, you can pull up a dog, you can talk, you can raise your eyes, you can close your eyes, whatever you do, it's gonna map that onto the emoji and then send it over. And that emoji is gonna convey the same look that you had on your face when you said the stuff that you sent over. Now let's get into the camera. One of the other most important parts of a smartphone, the new iPhone X will have a vertically oriented camera sensor as you can see there. Vertical instead of horizontal, it is a dual camera system similar to what you see on the iPhone 7 Plus. There you have that, there's that one. So as you can see, horizontal, vertical. Small change that a lot of people have been really worried about for some reason, who cares? When you turn the camera that way to take a picture, it's also vertical, looks the same. 
who cares? But some people care, whatever. I don't care about the orientation, I care about the specs. And what we're hearing is it's gonna be a dual 12 megapixel sensor, similar to what you have on the 7 Plus. However, you can see just by looking at this, the flash is bigger, the camera modules are bigger, but again, this is a dummy unit, so they may have gotten some things wrong, but it looks like we'll see a wider aperture and also dual optical image stabilization, similar to what we saw on the Galaxy Note 8. By the way, I've done six videos so far on the Galaxy Note 8. Some people say I'm a hater. I must hate Android, I must hate Samsung because I'm doing an iPhone video and they don't check the channel to see. I just did literally half a dozen videos on the Note 8. So if you're interested in the Note 8, great device as well, check out those videos here on the channel. Now, two things of note that stick out to me about the iPhone X camera. Number one, 4K video at 60 frames per second. There's no smartphone right now that's doing 4K 60. In fact, the camera I'm shooting this on right now, the Panasonic Lumix GH5, does 4K 60, but that was one of its main features, and this camera is about $2,000. Getting 4K 60 on a smartphone and the rumors that'll be on the front and the back cameras is crazy, but it doesn't stop there because you can also take 1080p video at 240 frames per second. So it's the same slow-mo as before, but before it was relegated to 720p. Now you get full 1080p HD at 240 frames per second for those slow-mo videos. But in addition to that, there will also be a new option for a cinema mode, 24 frames per second. That's what I shoot in here on my camera. So instead of having to do 30 frames per second, you get 60 and you also get 24, which will be great. All of those, quite honestly, are gonna be fantastic. This camera is also gonna be optimized for AR, augmented reality. We've seen some amazing stuff developers are already doing with AR kit, and it's no big surprise, AR is what Apple sees as the future. And I think this camera, especially in this orientation, because when you're doing AR, you're more likely gonna be holding your phone this way, and these cameras need to be side by side in order to basically act as a pair of eyes like we have here. I think this is gonna be huge for AR. Now let's talk about this side button. Much bigger side button is the power button here, and people are expecting that this button will no longer be the power button, it's actually gonna be called the side button because it'll be multifunctional. So, since there's no button on front and you wanna use Siri, of course you can say, hey Siri, but you can also just tap and hold on that button. You wanna do Apple Pay, there's no button on front to invoke Apple Pay, instead, double tap, on the side button and that'll bring up Apple Pay for you. Now the rumor is that these functions will be configurable. So if you want double tap to be, let's just say multitasking, you could probably do that as well. It's gonna be interesting to see how Apple uses the side button. And now let's get into pricing because this one is also kind of controversial, at least from the user perspective, at least from the feedback perspective. The expected cost of the new iPhone X is $999 for the 64 gigabyte model. If you want a 256 gigabyte model, that's a jump up to $1,099, so $100 increase. And if you want the new 512 gigabyte model, the first time that storage space is available on an iPhone, that would be $1,199, so $1,200 for a smartphone. I'm curious what you think about that. Would you pay that much money for a smartphone? Of course, you don't have to pay for it all up front. If you wanna get it on a plan, it would probably be roughly 45 to 50 bucks per month over the course of 24 months. I'm curious though, let me know what you think of that pricing down in the comments below. Are you cool with it or is it too crazy for you? Now let's move on to talk about the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus because those phones will not only be cheaper, but they will also obviously be upgraded from the 7 and 7 Plus. So we don't know what all those upgrades are because people have been so focused on the iPhone X, but at the very least, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus will have a glass back instead of aluminum back, and they'll support wireless charging, improved cameras. Both will still support LCD displays, not the OLEDs that's dedicated to the iPhone X, and the same RAM on the inside. So two gigabytes of RAM on the 8, three gigabytes in the iPhone 8 Plus, and by the way, three gigabytes is also in the iPhone X as well. Pricing on the eight and eight plus should be similar to what we've seen on the seven and seven plus. So the eight will start at 650 bucks and top out at $850. And then the eight plus should be 769 and top out at 969. So if you want the top end plus $969 and then the next jump up should be 999 for the low end 
iPhone X. That being said, what are you thinking about picking up? Let me know if you're buying one of the new iPhones, which one you're considering. iPhones are not all that Apple will be announcing tomorrow though. There will also be the brand new Apple TV 4K. That should be the official name, Apple TV 4K, which leads me to believe that the current Apple TV, the 1080p model will still remain on sale. So you'll be able to choose between an Apple TV or an Apple TV 4K. Obviously the Apple TV 4K will support 4K resolution and it will also support high dynamic range. So that's HDR in both HDR 10 and Dolby Vision flavors. HDR 10 and Dolby Vision are the two major standards right now. So you're pretty much covered in the 4K realm if you go with an Apple TV 4K. There's been nothing leaked about pricing, so I'm not sure where Apple's gonna price this at. What we do know is that there potentially may be a brand new Siri remote with haptic feedback packaged in with the Apple TV 4K. Now the current Apple TV ships with an Apple A8 processor on the inside and the new Apple TV 4K should be shipping with the A10X Fusion chip, which is what was found in last year's 2016 iPad Pro. So it's a tri-core processor, three cores paired up with three gigabytes of RAM. Compare that to the Apple A8 in the current Apple TV with one gigabyte of RAM and you immediately see that this new Apple TV is much more powerful. A small but important announcement at WWDC was that Amazon Prime Video was finally coming to the Apple TV platform. Amazon's been going hard on 4K and HDR content. So that was kind of a hint to me that we were gonna see some sort of refresh on the Apple TV and that's apparently what's gonna happen. And then the last major device that'll probably be launched tomorrow and announced is the Apple Watch Series 3 with LTE. Now I'm hoping LTE isn't the only new feature added onto the Apple Watch, but it is the major one and it's the only one that's leaked so far other than the new colors, one of them being blush gold aluminum and the other ceramic gray, which I guess is gonna be the new edition model. I'll probably pick that one up, although I really like the white ceramic that they put out last year. And I'm hoping that that carries over this year and they have a white ceramic and that gray isn't the only ceramic color you can get because a gray watch seems kind of drab while this white one, I think, is pretty hot. There will also be at least one new watch face as shown in the setup screen from the leaked iPhone firmware. So we know an Apple Watch with LTE is coming. We don't know any other features. Will there be new sensors in there, new hardware? The Apple Watch Series 2 already has a GPS and is already very water resistant. So I'm curious what Apple's gonna do to set the Series 3 apart other than putting in an LTE radio. Because if you don't use the LTE, then it would be the exact same watch and that really makes no sense. With wireless service comes a question of pricing. A connected Apple Watch will definitely have some sort of monthly wireless fee attached to it. It's likely that the carriage will provide service to the LTE Apple Watch for an additional charge per month that's wrapped into a user's current wireless plan. If it's using the new LTE M standard, then the rumor is that it'll only cost maybe a dollar or two per month in order to add on a wearable that has LTE built in. So hopefully that's what we're seeing and not something like a five or $10 monthly increase in your wireless bill. Now, those are the major announcements. There should be a few other things announced tomorrow as well. Probably new cases for the iPhone, new fall colors, new fall colors for Apple Watch bands. So along with the Apple Watch, we'll see new band colors and options available as well. The other big one is a possibility of revised AirPods. Now, I don't know that these are gonna be a brand new generation of AirPod, if you will. The AirPods are still very popular and if you order them from Apple, pretty difficult to get. Well, I guess now they're much better. They ship in about a week. What we do know based on the leaks from the firmware is that the charging indicator light is gonna move to the outside of the AirPods case instead of being on the inside where you have to open the flap in order to see it. That may be what the revision is and the actual AirPods themselves might not be any different. We'll see, I'm not sure. There hasn't been much leaked other than that front indicator light. I'm guessing we'll probably also hear about the new HomePod, a little more about the HomePod and possibly either the iMac Pro and or the new Mac Pro that's coming next year. iMac Pro is coming just about three months from now Mac Pro next year. There you have it guys, that's everything I'm expecting to hear from Apple tomorrow. There may be more, maybe more surprises. Their first time in the Steve Jobs Theater on the new Apple Campus 2, Apple Park, 
We'll see what happens there. A lot of people are excited to see what that looks like. For me, it's just a venue. I'm more about the products themselves. Let me know what you think though. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you're excited about. If you're excited about anything or if you just don't care, let me know that as well. Will you be picking up a new iPhone? If so, which one are you looking at? Does the price of the iPhone X scare you away? Don't forget we have the new shirts in. You guys have been asking for shirts for many years and I never had them. I finally got shirts made. Link down below if you wanna pick one up to represent the tech squad. I got a few of them in, they look and feel amazing. If you haven't done it yet, you can subscribe for free to this channel simply by clicking or tapping on my face when it appears here at the bottom of the video. It doesn't cost anything and it'll keep you up to date on all future videos. Remember, I'll be back at you tomorrow after the Apple event, recapping everything on a live stream. Be sure you subscribe for that if you wanna take part in that conversation. Thanks so much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards and I'll catch you in the next video.